buying a house is a massive investment of money for many people uh, around our age, millennials that are buying homes. It's by far the biggest purchase they've made in their life to date and probably will ever make over the course of their life. I wanted to get in a little bit into the demand side of things, who's buying homes right now. Uh, we've seen about half of all new mortgage originations this past year come from millennials. And millennials at this point are aged uh, 24 to 39. So of, among those who have been able to afford houses, a lot of them have been taking advantage of historically low mortgage rates this past year to do so. I think it's also worth pointing out just how massive the millennial generation is. Uh, as of 2019, there was 72 million of us. And as Zillow writes about this, uh, many of us are approaching our 40s. We're aging into our prime career building, family starting, home buying years. And uh, the combined number of millennials turning 34 over this next decade, which is the median age of first home buyers, is roughly 46 million. So there's a lot of millennials right now coming into that sweet spot. And I think the question really is whether there will be sustained demand for houses on the part of millennials. Maybe for 50, 50 years ago when baby boomers were buying houses, it, was, it would be reasonable to expect that many in those generation would continue to buy houses and keep demand strong. But we're in a very different, much more precarious economic situation, at least most of us across the millennial generation. So my, my question, the thing that I've been really thinking about um, as I've been reading up on the market this week is how many more millennials out there will be buying homes and did the, did the sliver of millennials that had the money to buy homes already make that purchase this past year? Are there really millions of millennials waiting in the wings uh, ready to make that home purchase? And I think you know, we can go into the statistics, but I think at this point, like many things, it's an uncertainty. That's interesting. Um, I could see how you would see like the first wave of millennials going through this process and leaving some people behind. But when you look at demographic shifts, we are seeing, especially here in the United States, we're seeing a more pronounced aging population and we're seeing more millennials be ethnically diverse. So we're actually seeing a decline in the size of the white population. Mm. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think that you will continue to see waves of millennials that will buy up property. Um, and I will also say that if you look at new construction projects, if you're driving down the interstate, a lot of them are advertising in a way that's appealing to millennials. Going back to the original point of having extra space or a backyard, there's ads now where they'll be advertising for the new complex that's being developed and they'll show people sitting at their desk at the laptop and it'll basically be saying like do you have flex space yeah yeah <laughs> you have a millennial in there it's targeted for millennials and mm. um so i think for that reason you'll continue to see uh demand interesting and and specifically for houses with more bedrooms with bigger backyards that kind of thing in your mind my yeah my opinion um which is interesting because it's like, at what point does that switch? At what point do you feel like you have too big of a house? And maybe like 10 years from now when things, I actually don't even know if I want to speculate on what's going to happen 10 years from now. Let's just yeah. say for now, people are thinking like, let's just make my home, my sanctuary yeah. and uh, just make sure everything that I need is there. So yeah, that's what, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I, I did come across a statistic that there were actually if the work from home trend continues, there would be 2 million more millennials that could afford that first home. Were they able to move from these expensive metropolitan areas where there is work to lower cost suburbs. So it's just fascinating, you know, the, the decisions on the parts of these business leaders as to whether they bring their employees back that could inform whether up to 2 million millennials end up buying homes or not. It's really interesting. And I think, you know, I think they're going back to the housing market and the legacy of the pandemic and, you know, what millennials want going forward. I think that there's this idea circulating among some of the older generations that 
millennials prefer flexibility in work in lifestyle and housing like we avoid uncertainty and there's certainly some truth to that you know all, our generation has lived through a number of extremely disconcerting times with 9-11 with 08 with trump's presidency uh with the pandemic and i think um there's maybe a tendency on the part of some of the older generations to think that we don't want homes but the reality is that millennials do want homes. And the, the issue is actually affordability more than anything else. 72% of millennials said they could not afford a home and 32% of them are avoiding purchasing home because of the cost of home maintenance. Another stat statistic there, 63% <laughs> of millennials have no down payment saved, so $0. And the, you know, the, the, the factors that are contributing to this are the ones we're already all familiar with, stagnating income growth, you know, increased student loan uh, debt. And, um, you know, I think maybe millennials will start to save as some of those millennials in like the 24 to 30 range age into uh, their mid to late thirties. But, you know, I, I think, uh, again, I think the issue here is not that millennials want to be these like free spirited, free spirited transients their whole life. I think they do want homes. The issue is just affordability. I have an interesting angle on that, which is because of 08, a lot of millennials learned how to save. Mm. Mm. I do feel bad for the millennials who lost their job in COVID during COVID, you know, like a lot of the restaurant workers and the fact that they don't want to go back to being a restaurant worker mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's just not paying enough. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. But at the same time, a millennial that experienced 2008 or saw their parent like struggle because of 08 for those they may have actually realized the importance of you know having that 401k set up or having the ira set up to have funds for emergency situations so while like the statistics are out there that you know people wouldn't be able to even afford like a 400 dollars emergency mm -hmm. cost which is just sad and shocking yeah i i believe there's a cohort of millennials that learned from 2008 and said okay, this stuff can happen. I need to have savings. So, I mean, just one person's perspective. I think, you know, you're absolutely right. I actually encountered um, a, a statistic here, another statistic that the average millennial has a rainy day fund that's able to cover six months of living expenses. I thought that was mind blowing that the average 24 to 39 year old has enough money to cover six months of living expenses. And you think about the fact that 63% of millennials have zero dollars saved for homes, maybe instead of putting their money into an account meant for a home purchase in the future, they're putting it into an account, uh, you know, a rainy day fund. So to your point, I think millennials have learned from 08, they've learned the importance of having a safety net. And uh, we are certainly savers, uh, despite the, you know, the, uh, kind of meme on the internet that millennials are blowing their money on Saturday brunches and avocado toast. Millennials are actually pretty good with their money.